Hello friends, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about methyl mismatch repair, right? So let me write it, methyl mismatch repair. We'll be talking about several repair, DNA repair videos in uh, following sessions. Now this DNA repair is very very important thing because remember DNA may encounter damages in different time during the cellular processes, right? It might be uh, the different mutagenic agents like the exposure to UV radiations. We all are uh, having exposure to UV radiations. Remember, because sunlight is having the UV and the UV index is going pretty much higher nowadays. It's kind of over 7, 8, so it's over 10, 11, 12 UV radiation when we're uh, in the tropical countries. So that's the reason that we are getting most of the cells mutated kind of all the time uh, due to this UV radiations. Sometimes also many different other other uh, reasons for that but methyl mismatch repair is specially designed it's a process of repair which is specially designed uh, for excluding out unwanted bases from your DNA right because if you remember that uh, normally inside the DNA we are having base pairs uh, called the uh, Watson Creek base pairs uh, mostly they are having uh, the base pair of A with T and G with C that's the normal pairing and the normal basis so normal basis inside a DNA uh, is adenine guanine cytosine uh, timing right so these are the uh, normal type of bases and also in RNA you are getting uracil but normally we are talking about DNA repair so we won't be talking about uracil uracil is an abnormal base inside the DNA remember so let me write unwanted unwanted bases so if you look at the unwanted bases inside the DNA uracil is one of the unwanted bases. We don't want uracil inside the DNA because it will be harmful, it will be dangerous. Remember why? Because normally uracil is produced due to a mutation, due to a change of base which is cytosine. Cytosine can be converted into uracil via the process called deamination. Deamination. So deamination of cytosine, cytosine give rise to uracil. Now why it is dangerous? Because remember normally cytosine pairs with guanine. Right? Now if it is de getting deaminated, it will be converted into uracil. Now uracil used to pair with adenine because it's behaving like thymine, so it's, it is going to pair with adenine. So instead of a GC base pairing, it will shift to uh, AT base pairing. It's a kind of transition. Remember, so transition is a type of mutation where purine replaces a purine, pyrimidine replaces a pyrimidine. Right? Transition is not required, not wanted. So if we are having uracil inside our DNA, we need to remove it as soon as possible. Now the second unwanted base inside the DNA that we can see are also result of different deaminations and methylations. We can have deaminations of, uh, of adenine. A deamination of adenine leads to another type of, uh, another different modified base which is called hypoxanthine. So that modified base is called hypoxanthine. hypoxanthine can be produced right and also this is a, also an, an unwanted base inside the DNA and also 5-methyl uh, adenine, 5-methyl guanosine these are the different types of if, if you're having methylation of adenine and guanine it will produce 5-methyl guanine, 5-methyl ad adenosine right so this type of methylation also changes the type or the chemical behavior of those bases that used to present in normal uh, DNA so if we change those type of bases, it will lead to the production of this abnormal base. And as we are getting this type of base like hypoxanthine or 5-methyl guanosine or this uh, uracil inside the DNA, it will lead to different problems, right? So we need to remove all of these unwanted bases from the DNA strand, right? So if in any case during the, uh, during the process of replication, transcription and all this process because you know DNA needs to be opened up many times during the cellular processes like replication, transcription and all these processes. So during these processes if any time you are having in incorporation of these unwanted nucleotides inside the deoxyribonucleic acid that is DNA, in that case cell repair machinery must be take care of right because cell machinery a repair system will be there it will cleave those unwanted bases out of the system and it will incorporate 
actual normal braces into the place of this unwanted braces so the replication works fine and the cellular processes works fine right so that's the process now inside uh, normally what we know that uh, inside the cell uh, misincorporation of the bases is also possible remember during the replication process because then the polymerization is going on during that process misincorporation of an unwanted base can uh, be there so if that things occurring in that case so in those cases uh, we need to take care of uh, this unwanted base we need to cut them out so that new base can uh, can be there right so that's why we use methyl mismatch repair now why it is called methyl mismatch now mismatch means remember matching means obviously a with t g with c now if any time if we incorporate some other type of base suppose if we incorporate a, a and and a c along with each other in in it forms a bulge like structure a loop like structure in between a dna so in this case also we need to repair those mismatches so all of this either the deletion of unwanted uh, nucleotide as well as the deletion of those mismatch is brought about by this methyl mismatch repair now for this methyl mismatch repair to occur we require three important proteins which are called mutator gene conducted proteins or mute proteins it's called mut proteins mut proteins and among this mut proteins we are having mut s mut l and mut h these are the three proteins important uh, for this methyl mismatch uh, repair to occur so what's going on here suppose this is the dna strand and among this dna strands let's say here we are having the wrong in incorporation of a base let's say here is a base uracil we added right now remember it it's having another term methyl term added now what does it mean because normally when the replication is going on right so one we are having a parent strand and using that parent strand a new daughter strand is being made right so actually what we have done soon after the synthesis of this process uh, there is a new dna and the parent dna right because the semi conservative model is suggesting us that uh, soon after the replication we will be having one parent strand which is blue in this case one daughter strand which is red in this case now this parent strand normally are methylated into a specialized region site called gatc this is a palindromic sequence GATC present in the parent DNA and whenever this GATC site present in the parent DNA this adenine in the DNA are methylated in both the way by an enzyme called deoxyadenine methylase or DAM methylase it's called deoxy D for deoxy A for adenine M for methylase so DAM methylase right so deoxyadenosine methylase enzyme now this enzyme methylates the gatc adenine both the ends why it is marking this adenine because marking this adenine is important so that they can get the idea that which is the parent strand the parent strand dna is methylated now the strands are methylated al along after the replication process right so say normally normally a parent strand so look at here normally a parent strand uh, both the uh, region at the GATC site is methylated by the dam methylase. Now, during the replication process, after the replication, what we get? We get those strands separated, and new two strands, which is colored red in this case, are made. So, red things are the new strands, or black things are the old or parent strand. Now, parent strands were methylated by dam methylase, but the new daughter strands, soon after the replication, remains unmethylated and they can only be methylated after a particular amount of time now during this time cell can recognize which is the parent strand and which is the daughter strand because remember daughter strand is a newly synthesized strand right so if there is any misincorporation of bases during the replication process they can check this daughter strand they can recognize it they can cut the strand they can make a repair in the daughter strand because they don't require to repair this uh, parent strand because it's already been repaired because it's uh, there for a longer time now these new strands are just being synthesized so if there is any misincorporation they need to take care of things that's why they are having this tendency to mark the parent strand with methylase so that's why it's called methyl mismatch repair because methylation plays a vital role to distinguish between the parent strand and a new daughter strand so it's over 
now let's come to this part so here this is the strand and let's say in this case okay so now let's stop so what happens mute ace first will be recruited and mute ace can recognize that region where the incorporation of wrong nucleotide occurs so mute ace will come and mute ace will bound to it so mute ace is now bound with this particular region where we incorporate a mute nucleotide here is uracil now after that it will recruit mute l now remember though mute s can bind with this section but it cannot recognize which one of these two strands are the new strands or which one the strand they need to cleave for understanding which is the parent and the daughter strand they need to recruit mute l so here comes mute l mute l will come and mute l mute l will be recruited and after the recruition of mute l mute l actually can bind with the methylated region remember remember the parent strand is having a methylation that we have already talked about the dam methylase activity so here comes the methylation normally the methylation is there so this is the parent strand so mute l will recognize the parent strand and distinguish between the parent and the daughter strand once after the distinguishing is done mutel also creates the area for the daughter strand to cleave right so mutel brings this particular area of misincorporation closer so that it can be cleaved right so the situation after this binding will something like will be something like this and this is the daughter strand here is the uracil misincorporation of uracil here is the uracil and s is bound to this place mute l bring everything close to each other to form a loop like structure as you can see in this picture the mute l forms a loop like structure brings this area very very close right so as it is bringing this area it is marking the misincorporated area now what it will do it will recruit the next protein mute age right so mute age here is having a very vital activity of cleaving or making a nick to this endonuclease so it's kind of an endonuclease like protein it can cleave the dna backbone so mute age will be recruited here let us draw mute age with this green color so mute age will be recruited this is the mute age and mute age cleaves this uracil right cleaves this dna from the backbone once it is cleaving this dna from the backbone from both the side what it will do it will make this dna cut right so what we are having now this small part of the dna where the misincorporated nucleotide is there is now cut using this mute out now once that cleaving is done then mute h removes this place or releases out of this place and this mute slh complex releases and during that part another protein called uvrd is incorporated uvrd protein is incorporated it is nothing but uh, helicase so functions like helicase that means it can separate two dna strands apart so what it will do now now if we clear this strand out it will look something like this this is the daughter strand cleaved this is the daughter strand this is the cleaved region again so this is the region uracil is placed here so you can see the region is cleaved but still it is being attached via the hydrogen bonding there with these two strands so uvrd acting like an helicase it will be recruited here and it will move to this direction as it is moving to towards this direction it will simply will simply releases those dna strands so it will release that dna strand out so as it is releasing the dna strand out remember this region remains now a gap it forms a gap a long gap right so simply that simple part along with this uracil is cleaved out by uvrd now it forms a gap having a 3 prime hydroxyl in one end so now our dna polymerase will be recruited polymerase 1 and polymerase 1 will elongate this strand and it will ultimately lead to a nick at this end 
right so new nucleotide sequences and right nucleotide sequences will be added there and it will form a nick at the end dna ligase will seal the nick and ultimately what we will get we get a repaired version of that dna right so what happens from the beginning so there is a problem which is a uracil incorporated a wrong nucleotide incorporated first mutase recognizes this particular area it recruits mute l mute l recognizes the methyl uh, methyl uh, added to the parent strand right methyl group added to the parent strand then it will bring the daughter strand to a, in a position to make a cut and the cut is made by mute h once the mutage make the cut, it will recruit UVRD. UVRD, which is acting as a helicase enzyme, will cleave out the small section containing the uracil base out of this DNA. It leads to the formation of a giant gap, which is filled by incorporation of new and actual nucleotide sequence by the DNA polymerase 1. And then ultimately, the, it leads to the formation of a small nick which has been sealed by DNA ligase protein. So you can see sequential events is very very necessary from the beginning mute SLH is acting sequentially after that UVRD and the normal uh, replication proteins like DNA polymerase and DNA ligase finishes off the task. So it is very very important guys you can maintain this. Now why it is important because normally uh, during each replication cycle the chances of incorporation of erone erroneous nucleotide is 1 in a 10 to the power 6 so 1 in a million chance of incorporation of mis nucleotide sequence but not always if there is a mutation in 1 million times then the organism probably die in most of the time normally in E. coli cell though the chance of having a mutation is 1 in 10 to the power 6 time but actual mutation observed is 1 in 10 to the power 9 or 1 in 10 to the power 10. So you can see kind of thousand fold reduced. So the, so the activity of mutation or the probability of mutation is kind of hundred, kind of thousand fold reduced by this kind of methyl mismatch repair and the many different versions of repair like nucleotide excision repair as well as base excision repair. We have just learned the methyl mismatch repair in this video and we'll be talking about base excision repair as well as nucleotide excision repair in the next videos. So that's it guys. Thank you.